my name is Erin and today we are going to discuss some common transphobic behaviors. If you watch part one of this video, then you already know some transphobic phrases to avoid. We'll link that video below in case you want to check it out after this one. Here, we're going to discuss five behaviors that can be quite transphobic and how we can avoid them to become more inclusive and understanding human beings. So let's get started. Being a new parent must feel incredibly exciting and baby showers are a really great way to show support for new parents. However, when we include a gender reveal component to the baby shower, we may not realize that we're actually being transphobic. Of course, I totally understand why new parents may want to know their baby's gender, but the problem is that we cannot know a baby's gender at all because they can't tell us. Gender isn't determined by biology or genitalia. And unfortunately, gender reveal parties often support this idea of there being only two genders, which is also known as the gender binary. And as a person who doesn't fit into this gender binary, these parties can be incredibly uncomfortable and invalidating to go to. I want to support my loved ones and attend their baby showers, just like anyone else. And again, we don't know the gender of these babies in the first place. Who knows if they'll grow up to be cis or trans? There are so many ways to be a loving and supportive parent without confining your child to a gender category, especially since they haven't even been given a chance to discover that for themselves yet. So definitely have a baby shower, but maybe take away the unnecessary gendering. Being misgendered is something that a lot of trans people experience on a regular basis. And I want to preface this by saying that accidentally misgendering someone does not make you a bad person. We all slip up sometimes. Shifting language can be difficult, especially when you've known someone for a long time and now have to refer to them in a new way. But there's a difference between accidentally misgendering someone versus not making a good faith effort to refer to someone correctly. Not using someone's correct pronouns is a sign that you don't respect that person and that you don't believe that they deserve the same treatment you do. So as an ally, it's your responsibility to practice using correct pronouns and to hold others accountable when they misgender other people. We've all been taught that if a person looks masculine, then they must be a man. And if a person looks feminine, they must be a woman. But we have to acknowledge that we cannot assume a person's gender identity based on their outward appearance. Instead, we should use gender neutral language until we know how someone identifies. For example, instead of saying that man looks so lovely in his denim jacket, we could instead try that person looks so lovely in their denim jacket. Easy, simple, it just takes practice. Relying on the trans community to educate you on trans issues is exhausting and sometimes triggering for trans people. I understand that your intentions are good. It's important to be educated on these topics as an ally but sometimes you just have to do the research yourself. There is an important difference between me choosing to educate others, like with these videos, and being expected to educate because I'm trans. And I can only speak from my experience anyways. So next time you want to ask a trans person to educate you, or really any member of a marginalized community, first ask them if they're able to and willing to explain, and maybe try to educate yourself first. There are tons of resources out there that can help you become a better ally. Using trans people as a punchline is never funny. When you make fun of trans people's experience, you insinuate that being trans is humiliating and degrading. Some popular examples of this include cross-dressing for laughs or for a Halloween costume, using gender swap filters on Instagram or Snapchat as jokes, and familiar TikTok trends such as this is my voice three weeks on Dora Explorer, which directly mocks trans individuals who use hormone therapy. This behavior transforms a trans person's journey to self-acceptance into a cruel joke. The way to combat this as a trans ally is, first, to avoid making these sorts of jokes in the first place, next, avoid engaging with this type of content, and finally, call out those who use transphobic humor. There isn't a safe space for transphobia. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and informative. If you feel like having more queer and inclusive content in your newsfeed, then follow us on our Instagram and Facebook at 7800.clothing or subscribe to our YouTube channel at 7800. We also have a clothing line you might like if you feel like checking that out. Also, make sure to watch part one of this video, which we'll link below. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.